We're now gonna take a look at different PEC drilling cycles. We have two different cycles at our disposal on a lathe, and these are much more common kind of drilling cycles to use on a CNC lathe or a CNC machining center, especially when center hole drilling. So let's take a look at these cycles and see how they work. Now the first one is a standard PEC drill cycle. Now when this PEX, it retracts right out of the component, allowing the slurry or the coolant to force the swarf off of the drill. It also allows the drill to cool before it goes back in and starts cutting again. So let's take a look how this one works. Now the first line of our PEC drilling cycle is G83. Now this is the G code, it tells the machine we're gonna start PEC drilling. It sets the standard for the rest of the line of code. Here, like the other cycles, we have our x-axis drilling position. Now this is the center line of the part, usually, if we're drilling a center line hole. So this would, would normally be x 0.0. So next we have z, the depth of our hole. And this is the final drilling depth of the hole we wish to achieve. R is our retract value. Now this is the new feature on this cycle. Now the retract value is from the datum of the face. So if we had a retract value of say one millimeter, the drill would retract one millimeter from the end of the face of the component and then go back in and start drilling again. Now this cycle allows us to add a dwell time a bit like the G82 spot drilling cycle. So adding a p-value again this is in milliseconds so a p-value of 500 would be half a second so bear in mind the p dwell value is always in milliseconds now q is our pec amount this is the amount of distance the drill will drill and remove material before it retracts back to the retract value so this pec amount is also in microns so when we give a value to Q, it would look something like 1,200 microns for 1.2 millimeters. So again, we're not adding a decimal point here, but we do have to add enough zeros to turn the figure into microns. So bear this in mind when programming a Q value. I've never understood why FANUC do this and not just give a, an amount, say 1.2, rather than 1,200 for 1.2 millimeters. But this is a system that we're working with. So please bear in mind we have to give this value in microns. If we're working in imperial, this value would be in thousandths of an inch. And finally, we give a feed rate. Now the feed rate would be in millimeters per revolution. So we'd be using a G97 G code that states we're using feed rate per revolution. We wouldn't use constant surface cutting speed when drilling because the surface always remains the same diameter. So let's see how this would look with inside our program. So I've highlighted our G83 PEC drilling cycle line here. This just replaces the initial G01 line that was in the initial drilling cycle program that we went over line by line. So G83 is our drilling cycle, our PEC drilling cycle. X 0.0 is the center line of the component. So it would bring the tool down to the center line. Our Z value here is the final depth of the hole. R is our retract value. So after each peck, it will retract five millimeters outside the face of the component. P is our dwell time. So a value of 500 would be half a second because it's in millimeters. And then we have Q. Q is the depth of peck. Now this again is in microns. So this will be quite a large number. So one, two, zero, zero, zero would be 12 millimeters per peck before it retracts outside the face of the component. And finally, we give it a feed rate. Now we cancel this cycle with G80 and we do this straight away so the machine knows the drilling cycle is complete. Now again, if we stop the machine mid cycle here and we start at the beginning, it will read G80 from the safety line and also turn off our cycle in case it's active. So there we have the standard G83 PEC cycle. This is the one you're most likely to see in most programs on CNC lathes. But we can add a few features to this to give us more control over it on some machine systems. So let's have a look at these different features that we can add to this cycle to give us 100% control over how the PEC cycle works. So what we can do is we can add i, j and k values to this line of code to give us a little bit more control. So let's have a look to see what these values do and how we use them. Now by using i, we can define the size of the first depth of cut. This is the very first peck. Sometimes when centerline drilling, we'd want to take a deeper first peck of our hole. 
This way it speeds up the operation because we're going in harder and deeper on the first peck and then when the drill starts to get too hot and the swarf starts to build up too much then we can retract the drill. After that we can reduce the amount of pecks that we need. So the I value is the depth of the first peck. Now something important to note here is that these values are not in milliseconds. So we're given standard dimensional sizes. So if we wanted our first peck to be 10 millimeters, we would say I 10.0. Now the J word in this sequence is the amount of reduction of each peck. In other words, if our first peck is 12 millimeters and we set the J to two millimeters, the next peck would be 10 millimeters and the one after would be eight millimeters. After each peck, it would reduce by this much. And each peck would continue being reduced until it hits the minimum peck depth. And we define this by using the K word. So if we set K to five millimeters, it would keep reducing the peck until it was only five millimeters, then it would stop reducing. And each peck from there onwards would be five millimeters. So that's the advanced version of the G83 PEC drilling cycle. Now a lot of the features on here can be omitted. We don't need to use the I, J and K. We don't need to use the X position if the tool is already in zero position. And we can also remove the dwell value if needed. So let's pop this drilling cycle back into our program and see how it looks. So we have our G83 that defines our PEC drilling cycle. Our X position is 0.0, .0 which is the center line of the component. Z minus 50 is the depth of our bore, and we're retracting to five millimeters past the outside of the surface of the material. So we have our 5.0. We're adding a half a second dwell at the full depth of the bore. So we would use P500 for 500 millisecond dwell time. And then we have our new features. So I 12.0 millimeters would mean the first peck would be 12 millimeters. And then we define J is two millimeters. So after our initial 12 millimeter drill, each consecutive peck from there on would be two millimeters shorter. So our next peck would be 10 mil, then the following peck would be eight mil and so on until we reach our K value. Now our K value is set at four millimeters. So each peck would continue decreasing until it reaches four millimeters and then it would keep peck drilling at four millimeters each time. Now, because this is a G83 cycle, after each peck, it will return to five millimeters from the end of the component to give the coolant chance to get on the drill and blow away any swarf that may have been wrapped around the drill, causing everything to heat up and clog up the drill. So G83 peck drilling cycle is the most common seen one, but sometimes Part of the fun of being a CNC machinist is making the programs run as fast and as efficient as possible. And we might not want the drill to retract all the way outside of the component. So to do that, we would use a G73 PEC drilling cycle. Now the only difference between a G83 PEC drilling cycle and a G73 chip PEC cycle is the chip PEC cycle doesn't retract all the way from the component. It just retracts whatever distance we set after each PEC while staying inside the component. So what this does, it eliminates the long wiry strings of swarf that we keep producing as we drill a hole and it will break those chips up so we don't get the long ribbons of swarf. So it will cause our swarf to come out in chips rather than long strings. So let's take a look how this drilling cycle works. As before, we define our drilling cycle by putting the G code at the beginning. So G73 is our chip peck cycle. Our X is a center line. The Z is a final depth of hole, so it's all the same as before. But the main feature that's affected by the G73 chip peck cycle is our R value. This is our retract value. Now, instead of this distance being from the front face of the component or the datum position, it's from the last known drill position. So as it drills a hole, it would retract back this amount before it carries on drilling. So if we set our R value to one millimeter, the drill would stop drilling, pull back one millimeter, and then start drilling again. We can add a dwell time to this, the same as before, but it's not necessarily. We don't need to give a P value if we don't want the drill to dwell at the final depth of bore. But if we do, we can add it here, and the P value is in milliseconds. 
Now our depth of peck, the Q value, this is the amount of material the drill will remove between each peck before the R value comes into play and the drill retracts. And finally, we have to define a feed rate by using the F word. And no, I don't mean that F word. So our G73 chip peck cycle would look like this inside our program. G73 is our cycle that we're gonna call upon X, the center line of the component, Z, the final depth of bore, R is our retract value between each peck. So in this case, a retract value of one millimeter, we we'll pull the drill back one millimeter and then start drilling again. Our dwell time as before is in milliseconds, so P500 would dwell for half a second, and our Q value is our depth of peck. So we will be removing five millimeters of material before the drill pulls back one millimeter and then starts cutting again. And finally, our feed rate. So we're using 0.8 of a millimeter per revolution. And then we cancel the cycle with G80 on the following line. So to produce our 50 millimeter hole correctly, we would use one of these two cycles. We would either use the G83 or the G73 chip peck cycle. But using a 12 millimeter drill over a 50 millimeter length, we wouldn't really want to drill this in one go because the drill would overheat and the swarf would cause too much heat with inside the material. So by peck drilling, we can safely produce a deep 50 millimeter hole with a 12 millimeter drill.